Hello, this is Roy with the Love Chat, and today's topic is the Dumper Experience. Now, this is video number 211. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and hit like. If you would like coaching on your situation, please visit my website, thelovechat.net slash coaching. Now then, let's talk about the Dumper Experience. This is a topic a lot of you are interested in, and so we're going to jump right in, and we're going to try and cover as much as we can that maybe I didn't cover in the last video. For those of you who don't know, I did cover this video before, and I will leave a link to that video in the video description below. So, the dumper experience is a bit of an interesting one, because it is pretty much the exact opposite of what the dumpy goes through, and they follow two main themes. So the dumpy feels the breakup, immediately. It's immediately painful. It hits like a train. And because you've been rejected and been told no, and really it seems as though the person that dumped you is just the best thing on earth because when we've been rejected, we idolize the thing that rejects us. Well, obviously because think of the power dynamic, right? Someone's telling you you're not good enough. You give a shit in the first place because you love them and you care about them and you let your walls down for them and you trust them. So it punches particularly hard because it's somebody you care about and somebody you get vulnerable with. And so now they look good when they're running away and we are left to wonder how is it so damn easy for them? How is the dumper going through such an easy time? And that's where we get ourselves into trouble. Assuming and mind reading that just because they did the dumping must mean they're having an easy time. So my friends, this video is going to be an attempt at trying to show you what many of the dumpers go through, and what if the dumper is having an even harder time than you are? So let's think about the dumper experience. First off, it starts with no contact. You have to realize that immediately, no contact doesn't work. This is to say, right when the breakup happens, no contact doesn't work. Why? Because it's brand new. It just happened. It seems like you're still there. If we're categorizing different situations and breakup stages, the first stage is sort of like relief. I want nothing to do with you. I just got rid of you. I can't think about taking you back. That's the last thing on my mind. No, the relationship is done. It's over. You had your chance. Now, what's going on in their mind in that moment? Well, think about a breakup. Think about what it means. If I look at somebody and say, I'm breaking up with you, that means that I'm going to inflict a tremendous amount of emotional pain on them because I can no longer see myself being with them or perhaps they're being a certain way and I've voiced a concern and they haven't really changed how they are and I walked out of their life. I can't do it anymore. It's hurting me to stay with you. It's never malicious. It's never, I'm doing this just because, just because I hate you. That's never it. They walk away because they feel like they can't stay. Now, perhaps they don't walk away in a way that is really constructive, and maybe they don't even tell you why they walked away, also known as ghosting. But they do it because they feel like at that point there was no other option. It had to be done. So, like I said earlier, no contact initially is not very powerful because it just happened. They built up all of this angst and anxiety over breaking up with you because... They know they're doing something that's going to hurt you a lot. And they're going to need a period of time, that relief stage, where they kind of allow themselves to breathe and go, okay, it's done, it's over, I don't need to do that again, we're free. And that's how it feels, freedom. And for the dumpies in the audience, you have to realize that initially, they know you still want them. There's no risk. Let's just say they dump you and then they maybe regret it a week or so later. Well, they're put at ease knowing that you're still there, you still want them, and so what are they really losing, right? Because you're the safety net that's there preventing them from any fall they might take. And since they know that, they can walk forward with impunity. There's no real risk of doing anything, of going out and exploring, because for the first month, two months, maybe even three or four months, you're still there waiting. And... What's important to realize is that it got to this point in their mind where they left you and they're totally fine with keeping you on the back burner or asking to be friends and we'll get to friends in just a second. 
because they felt trapped for a period of time and they didn't believe that period of time was ever going to end. Remember, their mindset changed. Their mentality with you changed. Either I don't like the way you are or I've tried with you and I no longer believe you'll change. And so they leave. What if they tried to get you to change because you weren't being acceptable? So many of us talk about how the dumper is just this evil person, and that's not true at all. In fact, a lot of the time, it's the dumpy who really, I'm not going to use the word deserves, but didn't see that their actions affected the other person. It's so easy to make someone everything for us. It's so easy to make them our whole life, and when we do, a tremendous amount of pressure happens because... You're putting them on a pedestal maybe they didn't want to be on. The dumper usually doesn't want to dump the dumpy. They just want the problem to not be there. And so you'll notice a lot of confusion with the dumper. A lot of hot and cold behavior that might show that, hey, I don't actually know exactly what I want or what I'm doing. So when I do my coaching, I do deal with dumpers from time to time. And a sentiment that they all have is, I'm very confused. I love this person, but I can't be with them. Being with them makes me feel trapped. It's like hands around my neck and they need so much validation from me and that makes me feel trapped and want to run. Why can't they work on themselves? Why couldn't they fix that one thing? And then you'll notice that a lot of the dumpers are angry. And you'll see this usually around the time you see hot and cold behavior and you'll be very confused. Little things they do, kisses on the cheek, one night stands, hookups, dinner, and you'll be very confused because it's sort of like, but you just broke up with me. What? You're telling me you don't want me and then hooking up with me? You're telling me that you don't want me and yet you're being mean to me because that doesn't make sense. You broke up with me. How can you be the one that's mean to me? That's like adding insult to injury. And in reality, in that moment, they experience anger. And this one is not one you always see. And they're angry because they didn't want to be the dumper. They didn't want to do the thing that made them feel like a monster. They feel as though they injured you and there was no other option because you weren't giving them one. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that this is fair. I'm not saying it's necessarily right. What I'm saying is, in order to have a healthy, successful relationship... There needs to be two people who feel as though they can be abundantly honest and clear with one another in order to create positive change. The situations that you see with a dumper and a dumpy are always difficult because there's two sides to the story. Maybe the dumpy sees the dumper as being far too hard to please. There was no way I could ever get you to smile or be happy. No amount of my love was ever returned. I feel as though I couldn't get through to you. And if you ask the dumper the same story, they can say this person needed so much validation and they always needed to be involved with anything that I would ever do. I could never have space. How can I survive and breathe when I'm constantly being suffocated? And so then you, the dumpy, usually will do what most people in 2019 do and look up something on the internet. How to get my ex back. Or ex back 101 or something along those lines. And then you're met with Brad Browning and Dan Bacon and all the other garbage all the way at the top. Because they tell you all the stuff that you want to hear rather than people like Craig Kenneth or myself, the dating guy, because we tell you what you don't want to hear, which is no contact. But why does no contact work? Well, we're posing this video from the dumper's point of view, so here's why it works. Remember that at the very beginning, no contact won't work because they need that relief. They need to let some air out of that balloon, and if they don't, it's basically ineffective. They're not receptive to you. They don't want to hear from you. Maybe they'll ask you to be their friend, but that's really just to make sure they don't feel any pain and they can slowly let go of you rather than having to do it all at once. But then you go no contact. Suddenly you become scarce. You're not in their life being that anxious, needy person who initially got them feeling suffocated in the first place. So you back away, and it was a move they were not expecting you to make. Wait, what? You're just accepting the breakup and disappearing? That is unexpected, but whatever, fine. I wanted to break up with you, and I meant it. That's usually month one through three. And I'm going to go ahead and say now that you absolutely should not be banking your situation based on any numbers I say in any one of my videos. There is no set timeline. 
So I want you to be very cautious when you set any type of expectation because you can very greatly injure your ability to heal if you do that. Do not walk away from this video and say, oh, well, Rory said three months and then they'll begin missing me. Don't do it, goddammit. All right, back to it. So let's just ballpark it and say the first one to three months, they're going through a period of relief. They're enjoying their time. It's freedom. And then they've tried the flavors. They've done the things. And they haven't heard from you. Surely I'll hear from them around Christmas or my birthday, and then they don't hear from you. Oh, wow, I can't believe I'm not hearing from them. This is weird. Um, are they okay? Oh, I have their shirts. Let me reach out about the shirts. I wonder how their cat's doing. Yeah, that seems good. And then around this timeline, remember, a ballparked number. Don't take exact numbers from this. And they'll reach out to you with something like a breadcrumb or an indirect text message about something irrelevant and totally didn't require your input or conversation at all. And this will really be a way to gauge how you're doing. Haven't heard from you in a while. Kind of surprised I hadn't heard from you in a while. And then a little more time will go on and they'll see, wow, they're really not trying to win me back. That was it. They completely let me go. And this is when some anxiety, some doubt will begin to creep into their mind. Well, what's wrong with me? Why aren't they dating me? Like, Why aren't they trying to win me back, at least? I dumped them. I'm supposed to have the power, aren't I? Are they dating somebody else? Let me go on their Facebook and see if they're dating somebody else. And then begins the social media stalking. And really, what are we talking about here, guys? We're saying that they begin on the opposite end of the spectrum. You begin the hurt immediately. Theirs is a delayed reaction. You begin inching in towards the center where you went from extreme pain to painful to not so bad to I didn't even think about them today and they go the opposite way they go from I'm good I'm oh I can't I got away from this person I'm free to hmm I wonder how they're doing whatever let me go have fun to god I can't believe I haven't heard from them and then eventually around this point they begin reminiscing about you and maybe they consider reaching out maybe they do but here's where most of you mess up you assume that because there is a path and a strategy that we can use, namely no contact, that means all you have to do is wait, and you can still do all the harmful things like checking their social media, talking to mutual friends about them, maybe going on Instagram and seeing who they're following. This is unhealthy, and it's going to keep you hooked. Remember, for the majority of you, not all of you, the majority of you, you get yourselves into trouble because... This person became your entire life. You had nothing else going on. And that's why if you're going to go into no contact and if you're trying to win your ex back, you have to pair it with the personal work. You can't just talk about doing it. You can't just listen to some of my videos and say, see, I did personal work for the day. You have to engage in the difficult work that's actually difficult to grow and solve the problem. Because a breakup, and Craig Kenneth says this, and it makes so much sense if you think about it, so props to Craig. He says that a breakup is a symptom of a problem. And we think about that on its face, and we're sort of like, no shit, Craig, of course it's a symptom of a problem. But what he's really trying to say is, if we're comparing this to something like cars, the engine didn't just randomly blow up. Something happened before that point to get it here, where it is now, which is broken. So while you're working on yourself and taking good care of you and what you need to be doing for you, have you really sat down and thought about what happened? What got us here? Do I believe the reason they gave me for the breakup? If I do, what can I add to it from my point of view? If I don't, well, what do I actually think it is? All in all, remember that your ex is a human. They're no better and no worse than you make them. I encourage you to remember that your ex is going through a difficult time, and just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. I assure you that if you had a magic eight ball and were able to shake it and say, is my ex sad, and the ball says, yes, you'd feel a lot better. But simply because you can't see a thing doesn't mean it's not happening. I'll leave you with this. Sometimes exes just don't come back. You can do everything perfect, and they just don't come back. Sometimes you do every single thing wrong, and they do. That's why you're supposed to put the self-work into you, where you can guarantee a payout. No contact does work to get your ex back. 
it works even better to get you back. So, to use an obvious example, if I can give you $100 definitely, or if I can give you $100 maybe, wouldn't you take the definite offer? That's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be so grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you want me to cover in the future. We had such a fantastic turnout at the Black Friday sale, and so I'm going to be reactivating the discount on all my coaching services until the end of December. That means if any of you want to get coaching, here's your chance to get another discount for the holidays. And before I go, I have one more announcement. We're going to be doing a live stream this Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is Wednesday, the 11th of this month at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll catch you all next time.